This is the Naked Mormon History Tour Travel Log for April 7th, 2017. Today was incredibly busy. I mean, yeah. I wanted to spend a bunch of time in the Palmyra, Fayette, New York area, you know, see the Joseph Smith home and go to the Whitmer home and everything, but it just, I couldn't make it happen today because I spent all morning chasing down old documents. Now, <laughs> these old documents um, are, are in relation to Lumen Walters, and hopefully I we've found, I found, we have found what we consider to be our... You know, bolstering evidence for the theory that Joseph Smith was using hallucinogens. Uh, we'll have to see how it all plays out and how the historical community assesses the evidence. And I'm not going to share it, of course, on the actual podcast because you know I can't tip my hand until I have a, a full, you know, a full royal flush in it. But that being said, um, it has been an incredibly productive day. Uh, I, as soon as I woke up, I went to the Ontario County Records Department and spent the morning reading through Lumen Walters' uh, microfilm file. And this information is not available anywhere except at the Ontario County Records Department on their microfilms. And I have to say, um, the guy was, well, fascinating and a apparently quite eccentric if we're to take the the news articles that were written about him on face value. So it was a very fruitful day. And I spent most of the rest of the day driving around Gorham and uh, trying to chase down their local historian to find out if he knows anything about the guy. Unfortunately, that those roads kind of dead ended. And I was looking to find any uh, legitimate descendants of Lumen Walters. Maybe somebody has a trunk of his old junk or something, but still didn't find any of that. So um, it didn't quite turn out exactly as I was hoping, but those were kind of pie in the sky, um, ideas and I wasn't expecting them to turn out. However, I did find some interesting information in the microfilms that I'm excited to share when it comes to the Sunstone presentation in July, uh, that we're, you know, Cody and I are going to be doing. It's a revelation through hallucination. So it's, it's really fascinating. So, you know, today was the first time that I ever felt like, wow. I'm actually doing historian stuff right now. You know, I'm not just reading what other historians have, have done. I'm actually doing my own pounding the ground research here. So it, it, it was kind of a fun realization to, to be doing that for the first time and sifting through microfilm records. Uh, it was, yeah, really good in that respect. After that, I went to, uh, it was fairly late in the afternoon once I was done tooling around Gorham and, and doing research there and looking through their library. I went down to Palmyra uh, and went to Hill Camorra. Unfortunately, I, I've wanted to, you know, take a bunch of awesome pictures and make videos for the, the whole, you know, two and a half days that I'm here. But today and yesterday, the weather were absolutely abysmal. I mean, it was constant rain and snow, so I didn't get as much, you know, sightseeing in as I was really hoping to today. But that being said, I still did go to the Hill Camorra and go to the visitor center and had a lovely conversation with a missionary there. And oftentimes when, okay, so I've told, I've said this on travel logs before, you know, when I go into one of these places uh, and, and talk to the missionaries. It's, I, I always make it apparent that I'm a member of the church and that, you know, I'm out here studying the history because, and, and this is my first ever church history pilgrimage, because as soon as they know you're an insider, they, they give you a wholly different tour than they would give people who might be outsiders or people who don't know it, or people who know the church and left, you know, they, they treat it completely differently. This one elder missionary had me pegged. As soon as I walked in, he, <laughs> he figured out kind of what I'm doing and he, he asked questions that I couldn't weasel out of. I couldn't, you know, deflect on. He asked like, um, the most pointed question he asked was how has researching the history of the church, um, uh, bolstered essentially, I am paraphrasing, bolstered your testimony of Jesus Christ. And I... <laughs> I didn't know how to answer. So I just kind of said, you know, you know what? I, I'm going to have to think on that for a little while, but let me uh, reflect the question back at you. And then we continued back and forth in conversation. 
And he was just proselyting the whole time, just trying to, uh, to tell me how awesome the church is. And, you know, he was trying to, to claim that he knew what I needed at that time. So we went in to a little, uh, like private screening room where they have just a massive TV and three chairs. And he and I sat in there and watched four separate church videos about Jesus and Joseph Smith. And after each one, he would ask my opinion on it, or he would, you know, move on to the next one without even asking if I had time for more. And it it was, well, you know, I I wasn't sure how to take the whole situation, but I could tell what he was trying to do the whole time. So eventually, after we had watched the four videos, we, um, we just continued sitting in this tiny little room, talking back and forth about the history and about testimonies. And at one point, um, I could feel the conversation getting, um, not not necessarily heated, but I could feel like I had said something that he was beginning to put up a wall. And as soon as you can feel that happen in a conversation, and all I assume everybody has been there, right? As soon as you feel that happen in the conversation, one or both of the parties have stopped listening. And they're just spewing information, and it's just a wall is built, and nothing passes through. So... I could feel that happen. And he began articulating a point, uh, talking about his personal testimony and, uh, was, was becoming a little bit indignant about it. And, you know, this is, this is really common of people that have indefensible positions. So I, I just, I stopped him. I just said, stop, stop, stop. Hang on one second. And he kept talking over me and I said, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm going to, I'm going to ask a question. But then after I asked the question, then, then you can articulate your point. You can finish saying what you're saying. And he said, okay. When, and that I could feel that that was like, I knocked a hole in the wall and it was, it, I, I was like, all right, my next question is really important. How do I say exactly what I need to say? So I told him, elder, I am not here to convince you one way or another that the church is or is not true or that God does or does not exist. That is not my intention. Those conversations are to be had at different times, and that's not the purpose of this conversation. But are we having a conversation, or is this a lecture? And I could see his his entire countenance, his body language changed. Everything about him shifted, and he smiled, and he patted me on the shoulder, and he said, you know what? That's a really good point. I, I just learned something from you. And then we proceeded to have another 45 minutes of good, pleasant conversation with each other. So I, I, it was this most, the most incredible shift of conversational dynamic I think I've ever experienced. And it was just that, that happened. And it, it made me realize that, you know, even if you do get into a confrontation, you know, a, a conversation where things are getting heated, you know, a one simple question that shows you're listening can, knock down those barriers. Now, of course, that's not a catch-all by any stretch of imagination. That's not going to apply in every situation, especially in conversations with family members, because there's so much more there. You know, this guy and I were strangers before we started talking. So, but it was important to, to see that distinction from when the conversation changed into him trying to teach me something. And then knocking down that wall and turning it back into a conversation where we're both openly trading information. And it was great. It was a really interesting and fun conversation. And I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it just as much as I've enjoyed all of my conversations with missionaries out here. I haven't gotten in a fight with anybody out here. I've asked pointed questions, uh, so on and so forth, but I have never gotten in any kind of argument. I've never allowed things to escalate to a point where that wall is built up and there's, there's no breaking through it. And I, I'm, you know, it's, it's honing my abilities for a conversation with, with believers because, um, you know, it, the best way to have these conversations and to get better at them is to have them with people on the fly. You know, it's the street epistemology and, you know, it was, it was just really fun. So, you know, that was kind of a nice little cherry to top my day off. And, you know, I, it was a fantastic day and I felt like it was very productive from beginning to end. And, you know, now I'm in my Airbnb just sitting here with my computer open and yeah, just reflecting back on the day and 
feeling really positive about it. It's been a very a good experience today. So yeah, uh, thanks for listening. <laughs>